All right, you guys. Uh, all these equations right here. We've got f of x equals x plus 1, x equals 2, h of x equals 1 half x minus a fourth, and 4 y, or 4 x plus 2 y equals 3. All of those functions are, what kind of graph would those make? They are actually all linear. I know the title of this is nonlinear. But every single one of these is a linear function. So this is the line x equals 2. That's like your straight line up and down, right? This one has a slope of 1, y-intercept of 1. This one has a slope of a half, y-intercept of negative 4. four. This one you'd have to solve for y to get your slope and y-intercept. But all of them are y equals mx plus c, okay? You don't have to write that down, but just so you can recognize linear functions, okay? Quadratic functions, so you might see them looking like this. A cannot be zero because you have to have an x squared term to be a quadratic function. What I do want you to write down is the parent graph, okay? We did this yesterday, but I want you guys to put it in your notebook, okay? F of x equals x squared. F of x is the same thing as y. So when we make our table, f of x and y are the same thing. So we're going to plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And we're going to draw the graph. Anybody remember what shape this makes? Drew? Like a U. Good. These always make parabolas. So I do want you to write that word down, okay? These are called parabolas. So any quadratic, which is when you have x squared, is always going to make a, a parabola or a U, okay, a curved U shape. All right, when I plug in negative 2, we're going to substitute that in right here. When you substitute it in, you have parentheses. So negative 2 squared with parentheses like that is what? Positive 4, okay? Now I'm going to plug negative 1 in. Negative 1 squared with parentheses like that is 1. Now we're going to plug 0 in. 0 squared is 0. Now we're going to plug 1 in. 1 squared is? Now we're going to plug 2 in. 2 squared is? Okay, good. And we're going to sketch a graph. So you guys do a graph. It doesn't need to be perfect because I know you don't have graphs, perfect graph stamps or graph paper, but that's all right. So I have negative 2, positive 4. Negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. And we get whoa, this parabola. Now, this is called the parent graph. So the parent graph is when the vertex, this is the vertex, is at 0, 0, and it goes up, all right? And it has that width, which is the 1, 1, 2, 4 width, okay? So let's see what happens when we change the parent graph. So we kind of talked about some of these shifts. So if you have something inside the parentheses, like this, it's always left or right, and it's always opposite. So anybody know what the x minus 3 is going to do to the parent graph? How it's going to shift? Yeah. Close. It's always opposite, though. So when you think negative 3, that does make you think left, but it's opposite. So Caleb? No, that's outside the parentheses. Um, Josh? Yeah. Okay. Right 3. So, guess what? Draw a new graph, okay? Does not need to be perfect, but I do want a new x, y axis. Okay, what we're going to do is shift that vertex over right 3. You do not have to do these points, but I like to do them because I'm kind of a perfectionist. All right, but you can just sketch a parabola that has been shifted right 3. So remember, our other parabola was at 0, 0.
the vertex just moved over, right three, and it still goes up. Okay. Now we're going to have the same parent graph, only this time we have a different shift. We have a minus three, and it's outside of the function here. It's not inside the parentheses. Anybody know what the minus three is going to do to the parent graph? Isaac? That's correct. Down three. So I'm going to put my vertex right here at down three. Again, you guys don't have to have these perfect points, but I'm going to do them. So you can just draw an upward parabola that's shifted down three. But every single one of those has an x squared in it, right? So you want to recognize all the x squared graphs are parabolas. Okay, anybody remember what the negative in front of the function does from the worksheet yesterday? Ella? Yes, this is going to flip it over the x-axis, so it's going to go down. So we don't have any shifts. It's the same parent graph, except it's going to go down. Again, you guys don't have to have perfect points. I just want to see this function and your graph going down. All right, so those are some of the rotations. Okay, now we've got the cubic functions. The last ones were quadratic functions. Cubic functions have x cubed. A cannot be zero because you have to have an x cubed. Okay, you don't need to write that down. What I want to see is this. Do you need to go back? Okay. Which one? Last one? All right. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so we're going to do just like three points on this one. So negative two, or five points. Negative one, two. All right, so we have x and f of x or y, same thing. All right, negative two cubed. So when I plug in negative two, that's negative two times negative two times negative two. So what is that? Negative eight, good. Okay, now we plug in negative 1. That's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. What's that? Negative 1. Okay, now I plug in 0. What's 0 cubed? Good. Now I plug in 1. What's 1 cubed? What's 2 cubed? Shape. Good. All right, do you guys remember what shape this makes? N, a squiggly, an S. Some people say an S, some people say a squiggly. I don't know, okay. So, we've got 0, 0 right here. That's the center of the graph. That's what's going to shift when we do our shift. Over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 8. So, we've got this. Oh, I missed it. Okay. That part goes up. This part goes negative 2, negative 8. This part goes down. Okay. Your points on these will not have to be perfect, but you will need to know... 0, 0 goes up, 0, 0 goes down from there, right? All right, so cubic graphs always look like this. They're just going to shift or rotate from that. So let's try some of the shifts. Okay, same thing as with the squared graph. So the first one's inside the function. Raise your hand if you think you know which way that x minus 2 is going to shift. Bethany? That is correct. Right? 2. So what we're shifting is from 0, 0, right? That was the center of that guy. So from 0, 0, we shift right 2. So a new graph, I do want that point at 2, 0 right there. Okay, And then it doesn't have to be perfect. You can just draw it going up and going down. Okay, so I do want to see the function, right 2, shift it 2, draw your graph. All right, now we've got x cubed minus 2. Raise your hand if you think you know what this shift is going to be because it's outside of the parentheses. Yeah, Lucas. That is correct. Down 2. So that means my center is now down 2, and it's going to rise right, fall left. So on this one, you guys, we didn't shift the center part, okay? So it's still at 0, 0.
but because of the negative, it's kind of hard to imagine, you guys, but it's flipping over the x-axis. So instead of rising right, we actually fall right. Rise left. Okay, so let's look at that. Still a cubic graph. All right, now we've got the parent's graph of the square root. Okay, x, f of x. Anybody remember what the square root graph looks like? Yeah, it's like a half sideways parabola. I don't know how else to describe it, okay? Half sideways parabola. Uh, all right, so we can only plug in positive numbers and zero, so no negatives here. So I plug in zero, I get zero. I plug in 1. What's the square root of 1? Okay. Don't plug in 2 or 3. Those are not very nice. What's the next perfect square number? 4. If you plug in 4, what's the square root of 4? 2. And what's the next perfect square number? It's 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. We're not, well, we do have that on our graph. Okay. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. So we get this. Half sideways parabola. Okay, you will not have to do those perfect points on all the shifts. We're just going to shift them from there. This is the point we're going to shift, the zero, zero point, and then we'll draw a nice little thing, whatever, <laughs> arrow to the right. Everybody got it? Okay. So same types of shifts. I have x plus 2. It's inside the function. That's just like being inside the parentheses. Anyone have a guess as to where we will shift this graph? Corey? Very good. Left 2. So I'm going to put a point at left 2. And you guys can just draw it like that. It can just be like a curve. Go to the right. Okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I have a plus 2 that's outside of the root, okay? It's not inside the function. It's outside the function. So somebody else, tell me what that plus 2 outside the function does. Someone who I have not called on yet. Monica? Yeah, so this is going to go up 2. You do not need perfect points, but I kind of like them, so I'm going to do a thing like that. Ooh, helps me draw better. That's okay. All right? Everybody got it? Okay, and then I have a negative in front. It flips it over the x-axis, you guys. So this one is going to look like this. Okay, the, the parent graph was here. It reflected it over the x-axis, so it goes kind of down. All right. Okay, good. Oh, now we have the absolute value. Anyone remember what the absolute value looks like? D. Good. So let's not even uh, do points because I don't want to. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. It basically has a perfect 1 over 1 slope. I'm not very good at that drawing. Sorry. And then negative 1, positive 1, negative 2, positive 2, negative 3, positive 3, right? It flips all these negatives to positive. So that what that's what makes it go, okay? So make sure your parabolas don't look like these, okay? Parabolas are curves. Some of you guys have Vs. These are Vs. Absolute values are Vs, not parabolas, okay? So that's the parent graph. The vertex is at 0, 0, and we're going to shift it from there, right? So let's do our shift. Okay, x minus 2 inside. Dylan, what's the shift? Good, right 2, so to the right. And then we have our perfect lines. Again, your guys does not need to be perfect. Just draw V shifted right to. Okay, now I've got a plus 2 outside of the function. Andrew, what does this do? Only if it's inside. Is it left or right? This one's outside. Nope. Isaac, what do you think? Up. Up to and draw your V, okay? Up to, draw your V. Left or right if it's inside, up or down if it's outside. 
And of course, we have the negative one, which flips it over the x-axis. So your v is going to go down. I know, I'm sorry. It's going to be OK, you guys. All right. This is not going to take very long. All right. Given our four functions, x squared plus 2, x cubed plus 1, negative absolute value of x minus 1, square root, you got to be able to visualize which is which, OK? We will match them. Number 1, what kind of graph is this? Square root. So that means that this guy is number one, okay? Square root. Number two, what kind of graph is that? X cubed. That is a cubed graph. So we would put a number two with our cubic function, the x cubed. How about three? What kind of graph is this? Absolute value. You guys don't have to write this down. You can just watch. Absolute value going down. So here's our absolute value with the negative sign in the front. So there's three, okay? And the last one, what kind of graph is this? x squared, it's a parabola. So number four goes with your x squared. That's all you're really doing on these. Good thing I taught you so much information today. Let's try it on the whiteboards. 